بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم آئی ایم ڈاکٹر سعید اکبر طارق ٹوڈے دا ٹاپک آف مائی لیکچر از بلاسٹ انجریز میکنزم اینڈ اپیئرنس آف بلاسٹ انجریز ایٹ دا اینڈ آف مائی لیکچر دا اسٹوڈنٹ شوڈ بی ایبل ٹو ڈسکرائب دا فزکس آف بلاسٹ انجریز and they should be able to describe the appearance of blast injuries as the risk of terrorist attacks increases day by day disaster response personnel must understand the unique pathophysiology of injuries associated with explosions and must be prepared to assess and treat the people injured by these blasts explosions can produce unique pattern of injuries seldom seen outside combat when they occur they have the potential to inflict multi system life threatening injuries on many persons simultaneously the injury pattern following such events are a product of composition and amount of materials involved the surrounding environment delivery method of the bomb the distance be- between the victim and the blast and any intervening protective barriers or environmental hazards because explosions are relatively infrequent blast related injuries can present unique triage diagnostic and management challenges to providers of emergency care to understand the physics of blast injury first you should be able to understand two things bomb design and physics of explosion forces bomb design consists of three components container explosive material and detonation device containers the first component usually is a pipe or glass cylinder made up of any suitable material such as plastic glass or metal that can be sealed airtight the second component of the bomb design that is explosive material may be some solid liquid or gas mostly sugar sodium chloride mixtures are used detonation device is either time delayed or remote controlled explosive materials with other items such as nails ball from ball bearing or metallic pieces of different sizes are also used so physics of the explosion forces are hot expanding gases of extremely high magnitude which increase atmospheric pressure in the region of explosion instantaneously and generate pressure waves these pressure waves blast waves or shock waves these are the pressure wave pressure transmitted radially from source into surrounding medium and it has three, three components positive phase negative phase and mass movement of the wind which is also known as blast wind these pressure waves travel concentrically 
in all directions at very high speed about 21000 km per hour like sound waves the pressure waves have the ability to flow around barriers and also get reflected by them the pressure is very high at the front of the wave and the maximum differential between the pressure in the region of explosion and the normal atmospheric pressure is called as peak over pressure it is measured in pounds per square inch a partial vacuum is formed behind these waves of peak over pressure lowering the atmospheric pressure to below normal length of time between the passage of shock wave and return to the normal pressure is known as positive pressure duration defining the characteristics of conventional explosive is the variation in ambient pressure over time during the positive phase wave causes rapid increase in ambient air pressure which is also known as blast over pressure the biological effects of conventional blast depends primarily on two things peak over pressure and duration of positive pressure so how the injuries are produced blast injuries blast wave causes injury because of rapid external loading in the body and organs these waves may cause internal injury in air containing organs without any external signs of trauma such as an ear lungs and git pressure waves front can pass through the human body tissue depending on their resistance type and architectural design they may pass differently through coverings of the body muscles and internal organs the passages through solid organs like liver and spleen is relatively smooth producing less damage organs containing air like lungs and middle ear are more susceptible and are subjected to shredding effect of the tissue air interface as the wave cross it and produce shearing movement in the other portion causing it to be bruised lungs show patchy alveolar hemorrhage throughout and death may occur due to respiratory embarrassment tympanic membrane shows reddening bruising and perforation explosions beside blast waves produces flame of very short duration smoke and solid fragments originating from within the bomb and environmental the sum total effect is conversion of bomb material and surrounding element into a violently expanding atmosphere of pressure waves containing flame hot gases and solid fragments these factor influence the outcome depending on physical characteristics of the bomb distance between point of detonation and the victim and protecting or reflecting effects of adjacent structures pressure waves have the property to be deflected around any barrier 
which come in the way following laterally and join the pressure waves front reinforcing and enhancing effect causing more damage so we can categorize the blast injury into four types primary secondary tertiary and combined so these effect have special characteristic features so these are this is a table indicating various characteristics of primary secondary tertiary or quaternary effects of blast with effect on the body parts and various types of injuries produced before that we will discuss independently so primary blast injury primary effect is direct impact of steep pressure waves pressure waves front traveling at a very high speed pressure waves front acts like those of blunt forces and produce injuries air over pressure above 100 pounds per square inch is necessary to endanger human being if the victim is in contact with the bomb at the time of detonation he is literally blown into pieces and fly in all directions for variable distance when the distance between the victim and the bomb is about 1 meter then the body is grossly damaged clothes are torn and limbs are amputated and blown away direct conclusive effect of the pressure waves on the victim produces shear effects at the air resistance interface primary blast injuries are more likely to occur in after detonation in an enclosed space organs most sensitive to the primary blast effect is the ear transient hearing loss generally resolves in first few hours after a blast up to 30% of the victim may have permanent hearing loss essentially all severely injured patient have tympanic membrane perforation injury to the lung is cause of greatest morbidity and mortality most obvious and consistent signs of pulmonary blast injury is hemorrhage primary blast injuries include pneumothorax hemothorax subcutaneous emphysema or air embolism air embolism results from traumatic alveolar venous fistula responsible for most of the early mortality more severe the pulmonary hemorrhage the greater the likelihood of significant embolism is there so primary blast injury also affects git and results in the tissue tearing and hemorrhage gi blast injury more commonly occurs after blast waves propagation in water gi hemorrhage and perforation is most common in the lower small intestine or cecum where gases accumulate now the second type of injury which has produced that is secondary blast injury the secondary effects are these are indirect consequence in the form of injuries received by the victim due to impact of debris energized by the blast debris consists of primary missiles 
originating from the components of the bomb itself and secondary missile which are nearly nearby articles thrown into flight by the blast victims distance from the point of detonation and nature and velocity of flying fragments are important factors to determine the outcome the characteristic features of the injury are just like dirt tattooing it is a triad of bruises abrasions and small lacerations bruises and abrasions are circular very small in size in cases where the victims are beyond few meters of the blast tattooing effect disappears and only large fragments may get impacted in various parts of the body or pass into through body cavities tertiary blast injury results from victims being propelled against structure by the blast wave or blast winds these are indirect injuries caused by the victim by his striking against the wall or other barriers under the effect of pressure wave front on most occasions victim is lifted off the ground and propelled against the barrier precipitating deceleration effect to the contents of his body cavities then the combined blast injury effects occur when prime uh, when primary blast injury occurs in the setting of secondary or tertiary blast injuries burns inhalation of toxic gases and radiation there is a special scenario known as homicide bombings homicide bombings is also referred to as walking smart bomb devices typically consist of 10 to 30 pounds of explosive materials and they may also contain nails bolts ball bearings and other secondary blast elements the bombers may be suffering from hepatitis b c or hiv so these were the few characteristic findings of the injuries which are produced due to blast thank you very much